Praise the Lord. Let's make our way to our seats. And what we're going to do right now is we are going to welcome the Lord in this place. I want to welcome you in this place, but we would not be here today if it wasn't for the fact that Jesus loves us and we're going to welcome him here. Amen. So let's stand right now. And let's lift up our hands towards heaven. Let's speak to the Lord for a moment. Let's begin by giving him thanks and praise. God, we thank you. God, hallelujah, for bringing us together today. Thank you for your holy hand, God, that's delivered us many blessings, many good things. I thank you for waking us up this morning. Thank you, God, hallelujah, that I'm not laying in the hospital right now. Thank you, God, hallelujah, that I'm able to worship you. I'm able to lift up my voice. I'm able to lift up my hand. God and pray to you. I thank you for the freedom you've given us. Thank you, God, that I'm not having a hide to worship you, but God, I'm able to freely do that. I'm able to lift up my voice without fear, God. I thank you, Jesus, hallelujah, for every blessing, for every time that, God, you've, you've pulled me out of a, a pit of sin, God. I thank you for your mercy. I thank you for your grace. I thank you for your long suffering toward us, God, hallelujah, and I thank you that you filled us with the Holy Ghost. Thank you for your word. Thank you, God, for your redemptive power, God. Hallelujah. Oh, God, you are so great. God, you are so mighty. God, hallelujah. You are worthy of our praise. You're worthy, God, hallelujah, of everything, God, that we do to you. Jesus, we magnify your name. We lift up your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, God, we praise your name. God, hallelujah. If there's anything we brought in, God, with us that opposes your word, that opposes your glory. I pray that you would forgive us. Forgive us of every sin. Forgive us of everything that we've done against you. God, I don't want to bring myself before you and my praise not to be acceptable in your sight. God, hallelujah, forgive us, God, of our sins. God, let us, let us keep our minds and our hearts on you. Jesus, hallelujah, and we expect great things. I expect great things. Do you expect great things today. Begin to give God some glory. Begin to give God some praise. Begin to give God some mighty. The song says, I came to magnify the Lord. Do you know what magnify means? It means to make something larger. I know God's great. I know he's above us all and he created us. Everybody knows that, right? But the Lord ought to, be, ought to be made larger in our hearts. The Lord ought to be made larger in our minds. The Lord ought to be made larger in our voice. So why don't we lift up those voices right now and give him praise? Why don't we sing before the Lord? Why don't we worship before the Lord and magnify him? Hallelujah, Jesus, we lift you up, God. We magnify you in this place. Hallelujah.
worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 Jesus. I glorify you, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. We worship you, God. We worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the, the junior high Sunday school class this morning, we talked about some generosity. And talked about being generous with our, not just our money, but with our time and our efforts and, our, and what we can do for people. But it means to go above and beyond and go above what, above what we're required to do, but actually step out and do a little bit more than that. So right now, as we go into this next song, I ask you to be a little bit generous with your praise, a little bit generous with your comfort. Because sometimes it's easier just to stand there and just be comfortable and sing a little bit, but step out and be a little bit generous for God today, especially you young people that we talked about that this morning. Be a little bit generous with your praise right now. Come on, lift him up right now. Give us some generous praise. God, I lift you up. God, I praise you, Jesus. I'm gonna go above and beyond my comfort zone right now because you are worthy, Jesus. You are so worthy of my praise, God. Hallelujah. I will sing unto you, Jesus. I will sing. Hallelujah, hallelujah. All for your glory, Jesus. Hallelujah. I will sing unto the Lord for he is worthy to be praised. Worthy to be praised. I will sing unto Oh God, you are victorious, you are mighty Lord, you are omnipotent, Jesus. There is none that can come in. I come to bless your name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. Bless the name, bless the name. Let everybody come in. Bless the name, bless the name, bless the name. Let everybody come in. Bless the name. Let everybody come in. 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 Let everyb
Jesus. We praise you. We lift you up, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. God, we ask that you bring your atmosphere into this place, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. We want you to move in this place, Lord God. We're just here waiting in your spirit, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. If you could all across this place, just lift up your hands to heaven right now. And just tell God that you're waiting on him. God, I'm waiting on you, Jesus, to do a miracle in my life. God, I'm waiting for your presence to come down and touch me. Hallelujah, I'm not impatient. God, I'm here just waiting on your presence, God. Hallelujah, you can just talk to him right now. Just have a conversation with Jesus. Hallelujah, he's your friend. You can just talk to him. Hallelujah, I love you, Jesus. God, I need you, God. I need you, Jesus. I love you, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah.
I'm gonna in your wait timing, God. You, Jesus. In your timing, God. No, I'm God. not turning back now. Hallelujah, Jesus, I will be faithful. I'm not turning God, back God, I'll be faithful now. to you, to your word, God. I'm not turning back Hallelujah, now. Jesus, I need this. I'm I need this, God. Trusting you, God. I'm gonna wait on you. Sing, I'm not turning back. I'm not turning back. I'm not turning back now. I'm not turning back now. I'm not turning back now. No. I'm not turning back now. I'm not turning back now. I'm gonna wait on you, Jesus. I'm gonna wait on you, Jesus. I'm gonna wait on you, Jesus. Come on, let's pray. Come on, get a hold of God, folks. Reach out to heaven. Reach out in Jesus and begin to pray. Lord, we depend on you. We believe in you. We trust you, God. God, do what only you can do. God, let the gifts of the Spirit begin to operate in this place. God, we speak the gift of healing right now. In Jesus' name, let healing virtue flow in this house. Let it be according to your word today.
still trusting. I'm still trusting in you, God. I'm not burning back now. I'm not burning back now. I'm not burning back now. I'm gonna wait on you, Jesus. I'm gonna wait on you, Jesus. I'm gonna wait on you, Jesus. I'm gonna wait. God is moving, folks. God is moving. Can you just open up your hearts and your minds to receive from the Lord right now? Come on, begin to love on Him. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. From the depths of my heart, the depths of my soul, I love you, Jesus. You are wonderful. Oh, you are glorious. Hallelujah. 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 I trust you, God. You are wonderful. You are counselor. You are the mighty God. You are the everlasting Father. You are my Prince of Peace. God, you are my everything. Come on, then. Whatever you're facing in your life, Jesus is the answer. Whatever you're going through today, Jesus is the answer. I'm not turning back now. Folks, let's just continue to pray. Hallelujah. Let's continue to worship the Lord. Continue to love on Him. Oh, we love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. I wonder if we could do that together in unity. Just lift up your hands and begin to love on Jesus. Let it flow from your heart. Don't just go through the motions because pastor said so. But let, let your love. Oh, let your love for Him just begin to flow from the very depths of your soul. Oh, I love you, Jesus. You are my everything. Lord, I know that without you, I am nothing. God, I know that without you, I am nothing. God, if it wasn't for your mercy and your grace in my life, God, there's no telling where I would be today. God, but I know that with your mercy and your grace touched my life. I know that it changed me, God. 
Lord, I know that you have kept me. I know, God, that you have changed my life. I know you have healed my body many times. God, I know that you're watching me. God, you're carrying me through times of trouble and crisis. Oh, God, you're my everything. You are my everything, Jesus. Lord, you're our healer. Oh, God, you're our strength. You're our counselor. God, you're the Prince of Peace. Lord, you are wonderful. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, in the name of Jesus, as you just continue to pray, let's, let's pray for these that are sick. We have several that are in need of a touch from heaven today. Brother Fritz, he still needs a touch. Sister Beck, amen. We have little Samuel, seven months old. This is Sister Esmeralda's nephew. He's in Brenner's. Several more that are, have he, need healings in their body, amen, that are out and not able to be here today. So let's pray together for them. Come on, let's in unity, one body, pray for these that are sick. In the name of Jesus, we bring these before you, Lord. God, we bring these that are sick in their bodies before the throne of grace today. And we stand upon the truth and the promise of your word, God, that says, God, that when we agree and we pray and we call out to you that you will hear us. God, you will answer, you will heal. God, you will restore, you will minister to the needs of your people. God, we stand upon the promise of that word today in your holy name. The name above every name. Hallelujah. The name of Jesus Christ. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Oh, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Could you just reach over and lay your hand on someone, their shoulder next to you, and pray for that individual? Amen. If you, Lord, just pray God's hand upon them. Just pray God's touch on their life. Hallelujah, Jesus. God, whatever they are needing, whatever they're facing right now, you're the answer. God, I pray what, there's things that they're facing, there's things that they're going through we don't know about. God, there's things going on in their life they're not, they don't even know about. There's the attacks of the enemy that they're not even aware of, God, but nothing is hidden from you. God, you have the hairs of their head numbered. God, we speak into their life by faith according to your word today. God, that you would meet their needs. You would be with them. You'd give them strength to walk through these valleys. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, give them healing in their body. Give them strength. God, help them to grow and become stronger in their faith through these trials and situations they're facing. Oh, hallelujah. Help them to trust you, God. Help them, Lord, to trust you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, yes. There is nothing like the presence of You're in the presence of the Lord today, folks. You're not just in church. Come on. You're in the presence of God Almighty. This is about God. It's not about a preacher. It's not about a church. It's about God. Look to Him. Look to Him. He's the author. He's the finisher.
Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I wonder if today we can realize just how blessed and honored that we are to be in the presence of God Almighty. Millions and millions of people all over the world will never know what it's truly like to be in the presence of God. Have you thought, stopped to think about that lately? We take it for granted that we can just come to church and we can come into God's presence, but millions upon millions of people will never experience what we have experienced right now, just being in the wonderful presence of the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And I'm guilty of just taking it for granted, and just scooting in, scooting out, just another church service. But God, forgive me. I'm grateful. I wonder if you can just thank Him. Anybody thankful? God, thank you for letting us be here today. Thank you, God, for coming and letting us feel your presence, God. Lord, there's a lot of people in a lot of churches today that can't feel you. They're in, gathered together, God, but you're not there. But we can feel you here. We can feel your presence, God. We can feel you moving. God, we can feel you in our hearts. We can feel you in our spirits. We know you're here. Thank you so much, Lord, for allowing us to be in your presence. What an honor it is. God, to be able to come into the mighty presence of God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Can we just praise him for that? Come on, let's give God some praise. Let's lift him up. Saints of God, praise him like you are grateful. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. God deserves a lot more hand clap than that, don't he? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise God. God bless you. So good to have everybody. Turn around and shake hands with a couple of folks. For somebody near you, so good to have Johnny with us. He was here for, uh, I think it was New Year's Eve service or something. He came. We we're glad to have Johnny on a Sunday. Amen. Johnny, good to see you again. And uh, good to have Sarah. She is with Brother Josh, good to have her with us this morning, and a uh, longtime friend of his, and also Cheyenne, good to have Cheyenne with us. Turn around, shake hands with a couple of folks. If there's somebody near you that you don't know, you don't, if you don't know their first name, you don't know them. You know, my kids will say, oh, I met a new friend today, and I'm like, oh, what's her name? I don't know. Wow, what a friend. Amen. There's somebody near you, you don't know their first name, turn around and say, tell me your name. And if you old folks, if you forgot, they understand. Just try and say, hey, I forgot your name. Amen. God bless you. Well, praise the Lord. Has the Lord been good to us? <laughs> I'd like our ushers to come forward. We're going to extend our worship into offering. We're, we're, not, we're not stopping part of our service and starting another part of our service. That, that's an extension of our worship is in our tithes and offerings. As our ushers come forward, let's prepare to give today. Uh, do, not, do not forget about your missions pledges. Don't forget about your tithe. That is 10%. That's what we're commanded to give. But above and beyond that, we give out of the abundance of our heart. 
God has blessed us with a great abundance of things. And maybe I, I could do this. Uh, would you raise your hand if, if God has ever financially answered a situation in your life because you gave out of faith? Anybody ever had an answer financially? Look around the room. Look around and see all these hands raised. I could tell you about several situations in my own life where I just gave out of faith, not knowing where it was going to come from, but I just gave out of faith. And God said, watch this. Watch this. And I saw when I gave, we didn't, I didn't just give so I could get back. That's not why we give. We give out of worship. We give out of surrender. We give out of an obedience to God. But in doing so, you cannot outgive God. You can't. If you need a financial answer, give. If you, if you have some bills that need to be paid off desperately and you have no idea how you're going to do that, be obedient to God and give. And he, he will answer your prayer. Hallelujah. If we can, while our ushers are getting ready. We'll wing it. Because <laughs> we know he's an on-time God. <laughs> Praise the Lord. There might be some people on vacation, but the Lord's never on vacation. <laughs> Don't you love how any situation in church, we can just, we can spin it, pastor, you know. Let's make it spiritual. Sometimes we can go on vacation, but we can call on the Lord and he hears our prayer. And guess what? This is a cool thing about the Lord. He may never take vacation, but he's at the beach too. And he's everywhere. So we can call on the Lord no matter what time it is. Let's ask the Lord's blessing over this offering. God, we thank you for your goodness. Thank you, Jesus, for blessing us beyond measure. I pray, Jesus, use this offering so your kingdom grows. That's the reason we give. We give out of an obedience to you. We give out of a sacrifice. But God, we believe that this offering is going to be used so your kingdom grows. God, hallelujah. It doesn't just go to pay bills. God, it goes so somebody can hear the gospel. God, we love you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you as you give. being faithful to the house of God, and uh, I'll be sure to remind Brother Locke that he failed to line up the, the uh, well, better yet, when he comes back, y'all just remind him. Everybody remind him. Matter of fact, you could text him right now and say, you forgot to schedule the ushers. <laughs> amen. Give him a hard time. They're in the mountains enjoying a little vacation, so amen. Don't forget ladies' prayer tomorrow night.
ladies, 7 o'clock, Mug and Muffin, Boys and Girls Club as well, tomorrow night at 7. Saturday the 8th will be at 2 p.m. Anybody that wants to come is a hyphen uh, service, and that is not just for this church, but there's a few other churches involved in that. If you're in the hyphen group or if you just want to come, hyphen is those that are not young people anymore, but they're not old people, so they're kind of in the middle. They hadn't, they're not married, but they're looking. <clears throat> they're old enough to get married. Maybe they can't afford it or whatever, but they're kind of stuck there for now. But uh, amen. So that's what? What did I say? <laughs> Been there, done that. So, but uh, let's, uh, but that's Saturday at 2 o'clock. February, we have a revival coming up, and we're going to have some flyers ready for you here shortly, but uh, Reverend Billy Huey will be with us February 16th, that's Sunday morning, and then also Monday night, Tuesday night, and Wednesday night, he will be preaching for us, so please mark those dates off on your calendar, Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, and be here, and also do your very best to get people here, amen, does anybody here know somebody that needs the Holy Ghost? Amen. That needs more Jesus. Amen. Be a, that's a great person to invite. Get them here for the, that uh, revival service. <clears throat> Those are services. And then in King, on Thursday night, he'll be at the King campus. And so if you know somebody in the King area that uh, you can invite, that do that. So uh, the night next Sunday, where's Spencer? You got your announcement? Debt is a thief. Did you have a video to show for this? Financial Peace University. How many of you have ever heard of Financial Peace University? Anybody here ever struggle with your finances? Raise your hand if you struggle in your finances. The rest of you are lying. Because everybody struggles with their finances. But, there, you know, there's a God way to do it, and then there's our way. Uh, Elvis did it his way, and look where it got him. But if you handle money... By God's plan, you'll never have to worry about money. The number one cause of divorce in America is money. You know that? If you will follow God's plan, and Financial Peace University is a 10-week or 12 now? Nine. <clears throat> Nine-week course. We'll be offering that on Sunday evenings starting next Sunday, uh, 6 o'clock, 6.30, 6 6 whatever time, 6 Six. Um, it's one of our elective classes. It starts next Sunday, and uh, you need to go through that. Everybody needs to go through that. Just give you, and they've got a little instance here, but I'll just throw this out there. How many people here we hear, have here between 18 and 25? Stand up. I want to show you the power of this. Between 18 and 25, stand up. 18, and we got more than eight that, don't we? Is that all? All right. Let me, if you are between the ages of 18 and 25, that general area, if you start right now, Logan, putting, Spencer, what is it? $25 a month. You don't know? You're the director. But if you start investing like $25 a month into a mutual fund that draws 8 or 10% right now, by the time you're 30, you'll have over a quarter of a million dollars or you, but, and you just do that till you're 30, excuse me, from 20 to 30 is 10 years. If you do that for 30, for 10 years, never put any more money into that. By the time you're 65, you'll have over, a, I think it's $250,000 in the bank, something like that. I'm 52, is that right? If I start doing that right now, and I do it for the next, or if you're 40, how many 40-year-olds we got? Okay, you start right now, Brother Josh putting that same $25 a month in, that same mutual fund, and you do it until you're 65. More than twice as long, you'll never catch up with what they have in theirs. This is the power of uh, compound interest. Why are we talking about that in church? Because that's a struggle. God talks more about money in the Bible than he does almost anything else because he knew that was going to be an issue. So you need to go through this. And you say, well, I don't need it. I know how to handle money. Well, you just keep on believing that, and you'll be broke like the rest of us old folks. Amen. But if you'll live like nobody else lives now, you'll live like nobody else can live later. Amen. Praise God. Show that clip real quick. For 20 years, 
Families have been changing their futures through really Financial important. Peace That's University. I started it with a bad suit and an overhead projector. So I set the room for 135 people, four people came. And now today we've had over one and a half million families go through this course. That's over two million people across this nation. You may be wondering, what is it? What Financial Peace University is about is a return to God's ways of handling money, but in a very practical, step-by-step -step game plan showing you exactly how to do it. FPU is about learning how to control your money. When you make these dollars behave, you're gonna get this sense of power over your money that you've never, ever had. Don't move into a home with 62 debts or six debts or, or two debts and no money. You move into a home broke with a bunch of debt around your neck, Murphy will move in your spare bedroom, bring his three cousins broke, desperate, and stupid. Marriages are being made stronger. Couples are learning how to talk to each other about money and getting on the same page. The closest statistical correlation to success going through this program are those that actively engage in this budgeting process. And for those that are married, they're doing it together. You change your life when you get sick and tired of being sick and tired. When you get disgusted and you have that moment where you say, I've had it. I am not going to live like this anymore. We're done. We're changing this thing. Talk about the why. Talk about your dreams. Ask your spouse. What would we do? Where would we travel to? What would we buy? What would be changed if we became something as a couple where we were working together on that? Now, man, I'm sure you know this, and we've been talking about it for the last few minutes, but it's very true. Women are different, aren't they? Say yes. yes. One of the things you may or may not know is they have a gland right in here that you don't have. It's called the security gland. And when she is feeling insecure due to money issues, that gland spasms, and it is attached to her face. This nine lesson, 90 minute class will challenge you. Now this is a boot camp. I'm your coach. And so I'm gonna, I'm gonna make you uncomfortable sometimes. You're gonna go home and go, I don't really like him tonight. Now, now if I agree with that, which would make you wrong. <laughs> That's what happens when the coach coaches you, doesn't it? He kind of rubs you the wrong way. There's a little friction on there, right? I've had some good coaches and they lit me up a time or two, but it caused me to go places I couldn't go otherwise. Life change is never easy, but you won't be alone. You'll watch a DVD each week and discuss it with your small group. Your classmates will encourage you and help you take those first steps. You'll walk away from FPU knowing how to relate with money. You'll learn how to pay off debt and save for the future. And you'll learn how to protect your plan. We aren't born knowing everything we need to about money. We learn, and there's no better place to learn than the Word. The Bible offers more than 800 scriptures on money, and Financial Peace University is based on that solid foundation. You are literally going to be doing things every week differently than you ever have based on biblical principles. Uh, things like doing a budget, things like working with your spouse, things like singles having an accountability partner, things like teaching your kids so that a godly man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. It's not theory. This is actual application on everything. What would happen if the people of God started handling money God's ways? What would happen? If the, what would happen to the kingdom of God if the people of God were out of debt? All you need is a plan. Financial Peace University is that plan. You need this, folks. You need this. You need to make the investment and make it happen, okay? Huh? Yeah. Amen. So you need to get in this program if you're, if, unless you enjoy being broke. I want a beautiful young lady to come up here. Nobody's volunteering. <laughs> Haley Luther, come up here, girl. Lauren, this is Lauren. Oh, somebody typoed it. That's okay. We'll get you another one. Okay, you pre can you pretend? Are you good at pretending? You pretend that says. Pretend that says Lauren, but we'll get you in. Uh, we're up. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I'll ask my kids, which one are you? All right, but Lauren was baptized last week in Jesus' name, and she's just, isn't she beautiful? So we're going to present her with this certificate, and it says, right, can you read that, Lauren?
It's too small for me. You can't read that? Now, when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, What's that? Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And Lauren was baptized last week on Sunday in Jesus' name, and she's been a perfect angel ever since. Right, Mom? Pretty close, but not. Well, we're still working on it. That's why we have grace. All right. Congratulations, Lauren. I love you, baby. Give her a hand. Amen. And then this is uh, old, but uh, somebody told me that I forgot to give this out. I don't know if I did or not, but either way, uh, if we forgot it, it doesn't matter, right? Uh, I have a Mike Jones, and I'm not going to ask him to walk all the way up here. You can stand up. Come right here. I'll meet you halfway. Amen. But Mike completed his, uh, I'll do it. I didn't ask you to come up here. <laughs> Thank you, Brother Eric. I appreciate it. Uh, come on up, Mike. Amen. This is a certificate of completion. This certificate is presented to Mike Jones upon completing the study of lessons in the Exploring God's Word Home Bible Study Program. And uh, I taught Mike and, and Lynn and then finished up Mike after Lynn passed. And I don't think I ever gave him this. But, Mike, we love you. Love you, man. Amen. And that's been... A, beginning of 2019 and I forgot to give it to him. It's all good. Amen. He understands forgetfulness because he's one too. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Isn't God wonderful? You know, it's all right to have a good time in church. Smile. Have a good time. Amen. Let's all stand. We're so thankful today for Pastor Josh and didn't he do a good job in Sunday school? And uh, this is Pastor Josh week and um here, Lauren, this one's right. This one says Lauren. Oh, I gotta sign it too. Well, give me that one. Come on up here and you can help me. We'll swap it out. We have a 30 day money back guarantee. It hadn't been 30 minutes yet, so. Amen. I wish I had got the Holy Ghost and everything when I was eight years old. It would have saved me a lot of leather. Saved my dad a lot of leather. Amen. But we're so glad to have Pastor. This is Pastor Josh Week, and um, he did Wednesday night, children's kids' gym service. He did Sunday school this morning, and uh, he's going to preach to us now. I'm still on vacation, so, you know. We still have, I've still got all that mountain air in my lungs, so I probably couldn't preach very long. So, but we appreciate Pastor Josh. Amen. Anybody, anybody expecting today? Amen. I'm expecting God to do something wonderful. Pastor Josh, come preach to us and uh, give us what God gave you. Amen. Everybody say, God bless Pastor Josh. Let's all clap our hands to the Lord right now. Thank you so much, Jesus, for all that you've done. And the opportunity we have to be in your presence. And uh, thank you, Pastor, for the opportunity. I give you honor. Thank you, uh, everybody, for loving me and being here and serving God. Thank you to my lovely wife, who's I will never fail to mention in the pulpit. I'm so thankful for you. Let's all turn to uh, Acts chapter 3, verses 1. Acts chapter 3, verse 1. One more time, Acts chapter 3, verse 1. If you're there, say amen. If you're not, too bad. <clears throat> now, Peter and John were going up to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour. And a man lame from birth was being carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple that is called the beautiful gate, to ask alms of those entering into the temple. Seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked to receive alms. And Peter directed his gaze at him, as did John, and said, look at us. And he fixed his attention on them, expecting, somebody say expecting, to receive something from them. 
But Peter said, I have no silver and gold, but what I do have I give to you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. Somebody say expecting. And he took him by the right hand and raised him up. And immediately his feet and ankles were made strong. One more time, say expecting. And leaping up, he stood and began to walk and entered the temple with them, walking and leaping and praising God. Let's just praise the Lord for a minute longer. Let's worship him for what he's going to do in this place today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Expecting. Today, I want to preach the following message to you. More expectation. More expectation. Pastor, if you could pray. Amen. And if you're going to preach with me, please be seated. Human nature tends to glorify the past. Oftentimes, as people, we say things like, well, back in my day, or things were better back when, or perhaps one of my personal favorites, when I was your age. When I was your age, when I was your age, we rode dinosaurs to school uphill both ways in the snow, and we liked it. Human nature tends to glorify the past. As a Pentecostal movement, and I am as guilty as uh, anybody else, sometimes we tend to glorify the book of Acts, right? And I'm not saying that's a bad thing. We want to study this out and we want to see this stuff happen. But what often happens when we glorify the book of Acts is we ask the following question. Why don't miracles happen the way they did during the time of the apostles? Why not? Why don't they happen that way? And the truth of the matter is they do. In fact, They happen more frequently today than they did back then. The supernatural is available today. Somebody turn to your neighbor and say, the supernatural is available today. About three or four years ago, I was out in the park doing outreach with several other people from this church. And what we were doing at the time was just passing out bottled waters. We'd go up to different individuals and say, hey, can I pray for you? Is there anything you need prayer for? And there was what, this one lady, I remember her name was, uh, was Kim, and she had her arm in a sling. And so uh, obviously, you know, it doesn't take the spirit of discernment to realize, well, this person obviously needs prayer for their arm. But I asked anyway, I was like, ma'am, is there anything you need prayer for? Is there anything we can pray for you for? And she began to disclose that she had something called tendinitis. She wasn't able to move her shoulder around. It was it hurt every time she stretched it out and so she kept it in that sling in that moment I said well why don't we pray for you and all of us gathered around Kim and we prayed for her and we laid hands on her and at the end we said now Kim why don't you stretch out that arm and test it out and I'm not kidding she just lifted that arm right out of that sling stretched it out and by the power of Jesus Christ was able to lift that hand up with no pain the supernatural happens today Another great example, he's not here today, pastor mentioned him, but, but Brother Roy Locke, Brother Roy Locke was unable to lift 20 pounds for a while, more than that, because he had a severe shoulder problem. He couldn't lift his hands above his head. That really limited a lot of the things he could do. But one night in a revival, he came to the front, and a man by the name of Greg Randall laid his hands on his head and began to pray for him, and then Roy, Brother Locke, he lifted up his arms and began to praise God, and today, he is able to do those very things, and he's no longer longer dealing with that problem. The supernatural happens today. My father, for you might not remember this, and I know he's going through stuff right now, but for a long time, about a year and a half ago, his arm was in a sling. He had a severe shoulder injury. He couldn't lift that thing up. It was incredibly painful and I remember it really bothered me and we'd pray and it seemed like nothing would happen and we pray and it seemed like nothing would happen and uh, one one week he went to this thing called the apostolic conference and while he was there he began to pray and God spoke to him and said why don't you lift up your arm why don't you just try to lift your hands up in prayer and praise and he said but God it, it hurts it's it's painful it's painful it hurts and God said do it anyway so he did he did he tried and it hurt more and more and more and nothing happened 
But then the next day he wakes up and he's going to get ready for, for, he's going and he's getting ready to take a shower and he moves the shower curtain out of the way and he says, what is this? I can move my left arm and there's absolutely no pain. The supernatural happens today. I can name at least three separate knee injuries that have been healed in this church. Brother Kevin right there sitting on the front row. Brother Kevin had a, had a severe knee injury at the last youth rally we went to in 2019. He had a severe problem from a, a wrestling injury, I believe, right? And, you know, we were praying in the altar, and God spoke to me and said, uh, Joshua, I want to heal Kevin. And just to give you a little context, at the time I was really struggling with some doubt. Really, God? You're going to heal him right here, right now, but, but what if I pray for him and nothing happens? And God said, do it anyway. So I went up to him, and I began to pray for him, and I said, Kevin, God says if you start worshiping God right now with everything you got, he's going to heal your knee, and he did, and he took that knee brace off, and he started jumping up and down, and he ran around the room, and there was no pain, and he was fine that Sunday. Church, the supernatural occurs today. The supernatural is not dead. It's still happening, and it's happening far more frequently. Just recently, over 7,000 souls were filled with the Holy Ghost in Bangladesh in a crusade. It is recorded that 75 blind people received their sight, 100 deaf people received their hearing, 53 tumors disappeared. The supernatural is available today. There's been a million soul revival going on in the Philippines, constantly crusading and seeing people receive God. Just recently in the past four or five years, the United Pentecostal Church International started a, well, now the United Pentecostal Church here in the United States started an initiative called the Carolina Crusade. And in that first year, that first day, over 500 people were filled with the Holy Ghost. There was 40 separate healings and there was a recorded miracle of food multiplying. The supernatural is available Today, it still happens. It's not done. The book of Acts is not just a history book. It is a manual for the miraculous. And I'm sure some in here are asking, well, if it's available, why haven't I seen it personally? If it's available... Why haven't I experienced it? So I want to ask you the following question. Are you expecting it? Do we expect God to do what he said? Or do we expect God to not do what he said? See, in the passage we read earlier, Acts chapter 3, there's two kinds of expectation. Somebody say two. The first expectation is found in the lame man. There's this lame man at the temple, and, and the Bible says that he was lame from his mother's womb, meaning he had never walked before in his life. He didn't have the capacity to move his feet. His ankles were all messed up. I don't know the exact nature of his condition. All I know is that that man every day had to deal with a debilitating problem. He lived his whole life in expectation expectation for a handout or maybe expectation for some charity or maybe expectation for some chump change from God just enough to get by right that's all I need right silver and gold that's that's all I need to get through my day God I, I gotta I know that I know that before I, I shouldn't I shouldn't expect a lot from you just give me enough just give me enough God I don't need a miracle I just need a blessing. I don't need a lot. I just need enough to get by. Why? How do you get to that place where the God who can raise the dead and whisper worlds into existence is only capable of satisfying a small need? And the answer is he'd become conditioned for too long. He had gone down to the temple, to the house of God, every day begging, every day asking, and every day nothing happening. 
The priests would walk by and nothing was changed. The Levites, the high priests, the people that were important, the religious people would walk by and nothing seemed to change. Everybody expected him to stay the same. And gradually he began to expect to stay the same over and over again. Did you know this man was alive during the time of Jesus? Meaning he was at the temple when Jesus was walking by. He was there when the miracle worker was going and healing people and opening blinded eyes and opening deaf ears. And yet something in him said, that's for other people. That's not for me. Kind of like a lot of Christians today. Oh, God, just help me get by. I don't need you to fix my marriage. I just need you to help us not to argue. Oh, God, I just need to get by. I don't need a a better job. I just need you to help me pay the rent. Oh, God, I just need you to help me get by. I, I don't need you to take away this sickness from my child or from my family. I just need you to make it a little easier. I don't need deliverance from this addiction. I just need you to help me manage it. I'm not asking for overwhelming joy, just not to be so depressed. I'm not asking for peace that passes understanding. I just need a, le- I just need a little space of calm. Just a little blessing, God. Just enough to get me by. But praise God, Peter had a different kind of expectation. Peter, whose life has been marked by all kinds of ups and downs. Peter, who walked on water and saw Jesus multiply bread and fish to feed 5,000. Peter, who also experienced failure at its finest when he denied Jesus three times and when he told Jesus he wouldn't. Peter, who saw all of these different things. Peter, who was a witness to the miraculous every single day. You know, the truth is, church, Peter is just as much a person as you and me. There was not much that was special about Peter. In fact, Peter has some problems, but Peter also had a promise. Peter also had something that made him different, and that was that Peter had a different kind of expectation. Why can't God do it? Peter asks in his mind. After all, he knows what God can do. He was there when the bread was multiplied and the fish was passed out and Lazarus was raised. He was there when Jesus came out of that tomb and a question has begun to work its way into his brain. Why not? Why not? Why can't God do it? And that lame man, he just looks at Peter expecting a little blessing, a little something to get by. But Peter, he looks at him and he begins to expect more and he gets it because right then and there, Peter tells that man, He's going to walk in Jesus' name. And he reaches down to him. And he grabs him by the arm. And he yanks him up. And the man is completely whole. Church, we got to expect it. That's faith. We got to expect it. Why can't God heal that person right now? Why can't God come through in your situation? Why can't God bless you financially above all you ask and think? Why can't God cure that cancer? Why can't God fill people with the Holy Ghost on the streets? Why can't God do something crazy right in front of me even as we speak? If we're willing to walk in the more of God, then he can. He didn't save us to just rot away on some pew. Sitting there, wasting away like that lame man at the temple, all withered up and broken. No, 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 no. He promised power to his people. He promised miracles would follow us as we follow him. I got a couple of them outlined right here. This is Mark chapter 16, verses 17 to 18. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall. Somebody say shall. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. That's not a might. That's not a maybe. That's a promise. That's a shall be. It shall come to pass. 
John chapter 14, verse 12, Jesus speaking to his disciples. He says, truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me will also, not might, but will also do the works that I do and greater works than these will he do because I am going to my father. In Matthew chapter 18, verse 19, Jesus says, again, I say to you, if any two or three of you are gathered together on earth, if you agree on earth about anything they ask, it will be done for them by my father, which is in heaven. If the blood of Jesus is on your life, then you got the favor of your father. If the blood of Jesus is on your life, then you've got access to the miraculous. Why can't God do it? What are you expecting? What are you expecting? Why can't God? You want to know why God can't? Because we won't. And I say that not to condemn anybody because you know what? I'm as guilty as anybody else. It's not that God can't, Brother Nathan. It's that we won't. Why? We won't. Because we're too afraid to fail. I know that God can do the miraculous, but I know that God can open blind eyes, but I know that God wants to give, wants to bless me, but I know that God can come through, but, 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 but what if he doesn't? What if I go and ask and I get my hopes up and he doesn't come through? I tried that before, Brother Josh, and, and it didn't happen. I tried asking. I tried going. I tried living for him, and it didn't happen. I tried praying for that person to be healed, and it didn't happen. I tried living for God in that moment, and it didn't happen. I tried stepping out in faith once, Pastor, and you know what? It didn't happen. Hoping God would come through, and yet in that moment, I felt like I fell. And I'm scared. Because what if I commit to this thing? And I just wind up being disappointed. What if I try to do that scary thing God is calling me into and it doesn't work out? What if I step out on those stormy seas and, and I start to sink? What if I promise Jesus I'll never deny him, but then I wind up doing it anyway? What if I start expecting more from God and he doesn't come through? It's easier here where I can play it safe. It's easier here where I might not fail, where I might not fall, where I might not get disappointed. I get it because I've been there. I'm there right now. You know, throughout my life, I've seen God do the miraculous. I've seen God cure my dad of cancer. I've seen him heal him of all kinds of problems in his feet so he could jump and leap around. I've seen him do the miraculous. But just this past Sunday, we gathered around to pray for him that he'd be cured of his heart condition. For those that don't know, he's had sex double bypass surgery and it's not going too well and we're praying that he's gonna get through and that he's gonna come through and that Sunday we gathered around him and we laid hands on him and we began to pray. But I gotta be honest with y'all. I had trouble speaking the words in the moment. I had trouble saying this stuff because I was afraid I was gonna be disappointed again. What if I pray and God doesn't come through? At least here, when I haven't yet asked, I won't be disappointed. I get it because I've been there. We all have. Desiring desperately to see a move of God, but paralyzed by the possibility of failure. Willing to try, but afraid to fall. What if, what if, what if, what if? You know what God told me that Sunday? 
He said, Josh, ditch that what if and pick up a why not. I said, ditch that what if and pick up a why not. Somebody in here needs to ditch their what if and pick up a why not. God says, I know you got faith enough to try, but do you have faith enough to fail and try again and again and again? Real faith doesn't live where it's comfortable. It doesn't play it safe. Real faith requires risk. Peter risked it. That day at the temple was a risk for Peter. Nick, come on up. I want you to start when I tell you to start. If he was looking at it the way a lot of us do today, his cred was on the line. He just preached a powerful message at Pentecost, and a lot of people were starting to look to him as a spiritual leader. And then he comes to the temple, and there's this lame man right there shaking his cup. You got this, buddy. Alms, keep shaking it, don't stop. Alms, alms for the poor, alms, alms for the poor, alms, alms for the poor, alms, alms for the poor. Keep saying it, Nick. Alms, alms for the poor, alms, alms for the poor. And Peter sees him, and Peter sees something. You know, if a lot of us were looking here, keep shaking it, don't stop. If we would see it as, oh, this is a possibility of failure. This is a place that if I mess up, I can mess up the message. If I pray for him and nothing happens, it could ruin my reputation. It could make me look bad. Let's all give Nick a round of applause for doing what he's doing. Keep shaking that thing, man. Keep going. Alms, alms for the poor. Alms, alms for the poor. Peter knows that if he messes it up, his reputation's on the line. His cred's on the line. His image is on the line, right? Except it's not his reputation. It's God's. Except it's not his credibility. It's God. Except it's not his image. It's God. And God is bent on protecting his name. A lot of us today, if this were happening, we'd probably see that man in the temple. We'd walk up, drop a couple coins in the cup. Let me pray for you, bro. Pray for him and then walk away. And what happens then? What were we expecting? What were we expecting? Were we expecting the miraculous? Or were we just expecting to get on through and get by and maybe bless him a little bit? That's not what Peter does. But that day he goes and he steps out and he risks it. And he says, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. He almost fell. That's what we think might happen, right? It was scary yanking that man to his feet. It was scary grabbing him and trusting God. It could have ruined his reputation. It could have messed up his credibility. But that's not what Peter was concerned about. Peter said, it's not about me. It's about him. It's not my will. It's his will. And if he wants me to do it, if he says it'll happen, then it will. It's a risk, but that's where faith lives. See, Peter had a different expectation that day than many would have typically expected. What if he falls? What if he doesn't get up? But Peter wasn't concerned with the what if. No, 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 no. He was holding on to the why not. Why not? Why can't God do it? Peter had faith enough to try. You want to know why? Because 60 something days before, after Peter had experienced his greatest failure in denying Jesus, Jesus came to him again on some old rugged seashore and said, Peter, I know that you had faith enough to try, but do you have faith enough to fail and try again and again and again? And God is calling somebody in this place to not just have faith to try, but faith to fail and try again and again to expect more, to believe more, to trust more, to see more of God. The music could come. What are you expecting, Sister Emily? What are you expecting, Brother Caleb? 
What are you expecting, Sister Lacey? What are you expecting from God? Because that is the most you are going to get. There have been plenty of times I didn't get the miracle I expected. Why? Because God's God. And he can do what he wants. And I'm not in charge. He's in charge. There have been plenty of times I did not get the miracle that I expected. But I'll tell you this. I never saw a miracle I didn't expect. I'm talking about having more church. More of God's person. More of God's presence. More of God's power in my life. More. It's God's desire that we live in the more, that we expect more, that we believe more, that we have faith more, more expectation. Because he desires for you to have more abundant life. More joy, more peace, more love, more power. We can have more as a church. We could have more people as a church. We could reach 150 by the end of this year. We could have more miracles on a daily basis. People delivered from their addiction by the power of God. Not just when they walk into this church, but when you walk by them and start to pray for them. We could have the word of God preached to every person in this city. We could have 15 to 20 home Bible studies a week going on. We could completely pay this building off. God is a God of more. But those things aren't found in your comfort zone. I know it's scary. I know it's scary living in the more. That's where God lives. He doesn't live where I'm comfortable, where things are convenient, where everything makes sense. He doesn't live in my box. He lives where it's scary. He lives where it's risky. He lives where I have to trust him. And he's talking to somebody right now. Ditch the what if. And pick up a why not. I know you have faith enough to try. But do you have faith enough to fail and try again and again and again and again and again and again? Faith is not the absence of doubt. It's an attitude accompanied by action. It's being willing to risk it. It's expecting more from God, even when it's scary. Let's all stand. If you want more from God, if you're expecting more from God, if you want the kind of faith it takes to see the more of God, would you make your way to this altar right now? Come on, feed your faith what it craves. Action. Act on it. Come on, come to the front. Let's begin to pray. God, I want more. God, I want to believe to see the miraculous. I want to believe. I want to believe. Help my unbelief. I want more of you. The more of him we have, the less of us gets in the way. The more faith I have, the less doubt I deal with. The more faith I have, the less fear I face. The more faith I have, the less of me gets in the way. Come on, would you make your way to the front and just begin to pray for the more of God. Someone begin to tell God, I expect more. I expect more. I expect more.
That's it. Come on. We want more of your abundance, God. Come on, just pray that prayer, God. Give me greater expectation. God, give me greater faith. God, I know you want to do wonderful things in me, through me, for me, for those around me. God, I know it is your will to heal the sick. It's your will to fill people with the Holy Ghost. It is your will to deliver people from bondages and addictions. God, give me greater expectation. Give me more expectation. Help me to step out, God, in faith. God, help me, I pray, to overcome my pride and just step out in pure faith and believe you and expect you to honor your word and expect miracles, expect signs, and expect wonders in the name of Jesus. God, I need great expectation. I need more expectation, more faith. a miracle, right now is the time to receive it. If you need a miracle, I want you to come. If you need the baptism of the Holy Ghost, if you've never received the Holy Ghost, that's the greatest miracle of all. I want you to come. We're going to pray. We're going to believe God. He's going to fill you with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. His Holy Spirit. Come on, saints of God, I need you to step out in faith. I need you to Pray in faith. Speak it in Jesus' name. Oh, we speak it in the name of Jesus Christ.
on, saints. God's not done. What do you need? What are you expecting God for? What do you expect Him from God? God's already healed one person. Where's Belle? She fell out, fell and hurt her leg and was limping around and God totally healed that foot. Right? Is it? Is it? Am I right? Don't make me laugh. I'm not, it's not real. Amen. Amen. What do you need from God? I need some folks to help us pray. Grace wants the Holy Ghost. Amen. Can you just stretch your hands towards this young, this young lady and begin to pray? In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Baptize her with the Holy Ghost today, God. God, the, the evidence of speaking in other tongues as the Scripture hath said. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise God. She just got a renewing in the Holy Ghost. She just, amen. Praise God. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor Josh. We've been praying and for more of God's abundance. More of God's, we've been praying for unity and expectation, conviction, and different things, consecration, sacrifice, submission, the things that are going to make us the church that God created. Amen. Jesus gave birth to a church in the book of Acts, in the New Testament. And most of us, most churches are so far away from that church. It's not even funny. We want to be that church. I said, we want to be that church. We want to be a ch the church that Jesus established the, and the apostles established with more faith Miracles, signs, wonders, truth. And I have found that's not always popular. Somebody said, well, you know, this person left, that person left. Well, Jesus had a lot of people leave too, Johnny. Matter of fact, he had most of them run. They beat him. But they preached, the apostles preached the truth. That's what we want. That's our desire. Amen. Can you lift your hands and pray with that? Pray that with me. God, we pray today. Put our list up there. Thank you, Pastor Josh, for preaching expectation. We've got to expect it. In the name of Jesus. God, we pray today for unity in this church, this body. We pray for expectation. God, we pray for greater conviction. We pray for greater consecration. We pray for sacrifice. More submission to you, God. Make us the church that you established in the name of Jesus to live in your abundance and we thank you for it in the name of Jesus God bless you expect God to do something great in your life this week you're dismissed in Jesus name be sure and greet our guests if you're a first time guest stop by our hospitality room right out the front here to the left we have a gift for you we want you to leave with a special gift from us but leave expecting amen Leave expecting. You can pray for somebody this week. How many of you will do that? Say, I'll pray for somebody. I'll step out in faith and just pray for somebody. Just pray for somebody this week and expect God to do it. Amen. God bless you. Dismissed in Jesus' name. See Brother Spencer in the foyer if you want to hear interested in financial peace. Love each other. Your power. Your power.